Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing? Great. All right, cool. Um, I'm Reese. Uh, this is Cooking with Postgres. Um, yeah. So I am an infrequent tweeter and an even more infrequent code contributor, but I am on GitHub and Twitter as Reese Alistair. I, along with two other folks, are the entirety of a small company called Auctiondown, and we specialize in uh, data connection and analysis, especially for utilities. All right, so, <coughs> cooking. <laughs> what do I mean when I say cooking? Um, can I do this? Is this a thing? Can I select and have my stove magically concoct some nice, nice dishes? Um, no. I'm not speaking about that. By the way, who can identify what is wrong with this query? Anyone? No? Is it, is it correct? I'm disappointed. It's missing that. It's a subquery, so you have to have an alias at the back. But yeah, still. I'm not speaking about cooking like this, uh, although it would be very cool if there was kind of a, a culinary FDW. No? <laughs> or maybe a period, or that's probably food. Uh, how many of you did uh, chemistry or physics at the high school level? Show of hands. Yeah, all right, cool. Uh, how many of you had to do laboratory works or experiments to reinforce the uh, models you learned in, in the class. Okay, and how many of those experiments always worked? Right, so when I say cooking, I'm really speaking about fudging the numbers. So if you have like a titration you're doing, for example, and you're doing the little drops from the pipette and it's not really working out how it should be working out, at some point you start counting three drops as one four drops as one, just to make sure that your, your formula works out properly. Um, so that's what cooking really is. But then you wouldn't cook in real life, would you? Like if you're a company, what would be the purpose of fudging the numbers? Um, let's find out. I'm gonna give you a very short story. Uh, for a utility company in Jamaica, electricity theft was a big deal. Um, and, well, First of all, how many people know you can steal light or steal power? No one? <laughs> yeah? <clears throat> so, how do you quantify the theft of electricity? Uh, well, you know how much power you're generating at the power plant, and uh, you know how many meters you have, or you know, customer meters and customer locations. So basically, you add up the number of the consumption data, you compare it to the production data, and it should be approximately equal, right? No more than, say, 2% off. Uh, in Jamaica, we were finding that we were losing about a quarter of the power was being stolen. So that was money down the drain, or I guess a while. Um, so how do you combat this? One of the things we, well, we need, we need this figure to, a national level, right? So you know that at the national level, there were that large amount of theft. But to combat it, we needed more localized information. Now, luckily, luckily, uh, the power doesn't go directly from the power plant to your house. There is some infrastructure in between, and uh, this green box right here is called a substation. And each customer is connected to one substation. So that was a way to localize the loss. We could now calculate the losses at the substation level, so we don't say, all right, for each, sub, for each substation, we're delivering X amount of power, and we can now calculate for all the customers on that substation the power consumed and get the figure, except that we had no idea where the customers were located meaning we had no coordinates, no nothing at all. We knew they were there, they were being billed, they were collecting, they were um, paying, you know, well, some of them were paying money, some were stealing. So what do you do when you don't know where people are? You go and map them. So in a two-month uh, period, 
about a decade ago, uh, we mapped approximately a half a million customers, and all was well with the world, or so we thought. Because the reality was, you can't map a half a million customers in two months using students, especially in the Caribbean, where in, in, in the middle of hurricane season. So we were left with a problem because we only mapped about 400,000 of the half a million customers. So we had a shortfall of a little over, what's that, 140,000, and the funding for mapping was out, so we had to try other means. Hence, we tried to cook. So we have the ingredients, so, which are some tables, I'll show you shortly, and I'll, I'll, I'll get the whole cooking thing now. So we have customers, and we have people that go to every customer and read the meter every month. So I'm going to show you three tables that we're using to do the cooking today. Uh, it's info, location, and MR data. The location table basically contains each customer's premises number, that's a unique ID, and a location or coordinate. Uh, the info table contains the same unique ID and then name, address, and some other information. And MR data consists of the data that the meter reader collected. Do you know what the meter reader is, by the way? Someone that actually goes and physically reads your, your uh, power meter. So you like walk from place to place, go to one house, another house, and read each meter. Um, I'm going to show you what those tables look like. This is the location table. So that first uh, column with premises is with the unique ID. G is the geometry column. You'll notice that the second record, the G, is null. So this is a, a customer for which you have no location. Um, the MR data table contains the timestamp of when the meter was read, the actual meter reading, and the premises number. For our purposes, we're interested in the premises number, which again is a unique ID, and the timestamp. And uh, the last table is the info table, which I don't think I use quite a bit. But this one contains address information and the premises number. It's important to note that the meters are read in what are called routes. So each meter reader would uh, have about 250 to 300 different houses to go to to read their meters. They are usually in a very small area, like a small neighborhood, like three or four or five streets, or what you might call a block. Um, so these areas were very, very localized. So this is what the customer, Ooh, where did that picture go? Okay. There should be a picture of the customer base right here. All right, so there are no pictures. All right, I'm going to ask you to imagine Jamaica with, with dots on it. Um, <laughs> so our first step is to basically get an idea for each route, how many customers there are, and how many customers uh, have no geometry. And also, at the same time, we're going to basically say, on this day, the meter reader started. Does this work, by the way, this pointing thing? Astrid, this works? Um, or maybe you can show it on screen. Mm. I can highlight it, don't worry. So, for each route, right here, that's the route ID, there were 260 customers with a location and 304 customers overall in that route. So that's about 86% coverage. Uh, let me scroll to my right. And then min and max are when he started the route, the route that day and when he finished. Uh, we're going to zoom in on a particular route. By the way, is this SQL making sense to you people? Can you all see it? No? That sucks. Um, there should be another picture. But I, oh, here it is. Uh, so this is the base map I was telling you earlier with the, with the points that we knew about. And uh, Okay, so this is, these are the bounding boxes of the routes. Clearly, some boxes are very, very big because there is just very poor data in there to, to begin with. 
and we would ignore all these boxes for these routes. Uh, for the smaller boxes are the routes we'd be concentrating on because that, those routes are in a very small area and we can get good data from that. All right, so what was the actual plan? So we know the beta reader guy or girl walks a certain path, right? He goes to every house and collects data with a timestamp. So the thinking was, all right, cool, he does that. He's also collecting data at houses for which you don't know the location. And a small side note, this was like a decade ago before like, <laughs> there was ubiquitous GPS. So he, didn't, he could have at the time gone and collected a location, but the devices he used didn't do that. So he just got the timestamp alone. So we're thinking, all right, he goes around, he walks to each house. Oops. Walks to each house, and we have that data. What if we were to build a line string using the ordered points to get a routing of where he went? We could do that. So, and you, you can't see the top, right? So this, this query is basically ordering all the points in a given route by time. Uh, and you can see here, that there is a blank, a blank geometry right here. There are a couple of them in the actual list, but this route had about 15, I think, empty. We're going to build a line string. <coughs> by doing this. So this is uh, another query where I am selecting all the points, I'm ordering it by time, in the subquery, and I'm dumping that into ST make line, which accepts, well, one of the incarnations is accepts uh, ordered points to build a line string. So when you did that, you would have gotten this lovely little um, gra well, picture right here. So you can see the bottom right hand corner where it says one, two, and next single digits, that's where he started, and then he basically went along that area to the top at 184. We have our ordered line string, which is good. Uh, what's the next step? And this is, oh, this is the fun bit, as far as I'm concerned. All right, so we're going to use uh, linear referencing to get the unknown points. So using ST line interpolate point, we can, how many of you have, or how many of you have used any kind of linear referencing in post before? One, two, few, okay. So we're basically saying, Given this line string of some length, we know what time here at the meter, we know the total length of time taken for the entire route, we can get a percentage of the actual time, and using that percentage, derive a point based on where he would have been. And we, went, we did that using this query here. This is what the data looks like textually, which is kind of useless, but then the beauty of it is all these red dots that you're seeing here were the interpolated points, and uh, that's what we derived from the line string. In some areas of Jamaica, like especially smaller routes, you'd find that when you actually went back a couple of years later to actually map with GPS, the derived points were like right here, and the GPS point was like right here. So it was very, very accurate in some cases, not all. So we actually did that, got our number of customers from the 410,000 to about 500 and like 15 or 530, and we solved the problem. Because, yeah, we solved the problem of not having the customers to know, generate the local losses for the company. So that is how you get the lovely dish after you've cooked with post this. Any questions? Mm -hmm. oh. well, what's happened to the customers that was found stealing electricity? <laughs> um, <laughs> if your phone's stealing electricity, depending on who you are and where you live, um, usually we give you a chance. We will what's called a back bill you. Legally, we can only go back six months, so we'll ascertain what you're using now, and then just times it by six, and you pay out over time. Um, that's what happens to those people. Mm -hmm. 
Some more questions? I have one question, um, just to get to know, um, is uh, OpenStreetMap data for you a value, or how is it? One more time? Um, you, you know about OpenStreetMap data, mm -hmm. can you make use of OpenStreetMap data? In your yeah, area? we do. All right, so first of all, this entire thing was a decade ago. Um, this is not anything new. I mean, like, now we're, we have GPSs and everything, so we can go and map, map stuff. We do use OpenStreetMap data, um, quite a bit at work. Um, and <laughs> When I, was giving, when I was preparing this talk, a friend of mine said, but why don't you use geocoding for, to find addresses, to find like customers? And the address data in Jamaica is not very good outside of the city. So you'll find like an entire 10 square mile area and everybody's address is literally St. Anne's Bay, St. Anne, and that's it. No street, no street number. So. More questions? Okay, looks like there are no qu more questions, so thanks, Reese, for the great okay, okay. presentation, and uh, hope you enjoyed the Postgres session here. Enjoy the conference, everyone, and now we have time. it's time for a break. Bye. Nice, nice.